All martial arts begin with respect and end with respect. Be sure to learn the etiquette of your particular art as this is an outward expression of gratitude and appreciation to the sacrifice of those who came before you and a reverence toward the blade. Carefully guide the katana through your obi until it comes out. Let it rest on the bottom hemo of the hakama. Once in position, hold the sword closed with your thumb positioned at two o'clock on the suba. Do not keep your thumb directly above the blade as accidental slipping of the blade can cause an injury. Footwork. The footwork of swordsmanship is critical. First, it's important to note that the footwork will depend on the branch of sword training that you practice. However, certain principles, such as having a firm movable stance, remain true through all. Whether you wear a tubby or your barefoot, you must remain connected to the earth beneath you. There is a sense of light yet heavy, this ability to slide forward or back. Feel the weight transfer from front foot to rear and rear to lead. Allow your toes to grip the mat like a crouched leopard. You should be able to pounce at will. All movement with the feet must facilitate the cutting angle of the sword. Do not hold the sword with outward wrist. This will cause your four knuckles to be misaligned with the cutting edge of the sword. If swung in this manner, the sword's cutting edge will be slow, the arms will be stiff, and the cutting of the air will be lessened. Also, while doing cutting practice, there is the danger of the sword flying out of your hands. Thus, cutting and the handling of a sharp sword must be done by serious practitioners who are dedicated to the mastery of their craft. While opening with the right hand, pull with the left. The left hand is pulling the saya, while the right hand is cutting across in a horizontal stroke. Here, don't be tense, yet keep intensity of purpose. Open in a broad strike as if cutting through a tidal wave. Pull the left elbow back to increase range of motion. Open the sword and connect to the breath. Here, the breathing is abdominal breathing. Resheating of the sword or noto is when we return the blade to the scabbard. There are different types of noto. The important thing when working with a shinken or live blade is safety. Be sure not to let your fingers come in contact with the cutting edge of the sword. Head. Place. Keep the spine upright and the spine suspended. Maintain a firm grip on the handle. Cast the sword forward in a large arc. Throw the tip outward as if fishing in a great lake. Let the sword stop parallel to the mats. Maintain extension of your arms and elbows. Let your triceps support your forearms. When you lift the sword overhead, lead from the tip of the sword, the kisaki. When you swing the sword, find connection from the base of your feet up through your legs, permeate through the upper body and out into the sword. Let the sword be an extension of you. Bow to the sword and bow to the kamiza or kamidana, then bow to the teacher. Yaido practice is a meditation in motion. Please remember, the sword that kills is the same sword that gives life. This killing should not be only understood as a person. This killing is also an ending to all hindrances and distractions to kill your own doubts, frustrations, weaknesses, impatience and so on. This killing of the evils within is crucial, as it's what gives birth to the good, the new you, the new life. More of these talks are further outlined in my book, A Walk Toward Victory Over the Ego, Journey Inward. Be sure to read those passages and put them from paper to heart. It is my wish that you journey safely and journey well.